Today is going to be a good day. We are finally going to solve our storage issues and start crafting everything necessary to make some storage drawers. And hopefully we can get into more RF tools dimensions. That would be fun. So yeah, we're definitely going to need at least one more crafter. Okay, there's that. Finally going to move this. Speed upgrades and all of our patterns. And I'll just put this kind of behind everything. Awesome. So first of all, we need only one drawer controller. A bunch of regular drawers. At least they're framed versions, and you'll see why I'm doing it this way. Okay, there's those. And then I'll craft like 16 of the 2x2 versions. And then we also need to make a framing table. So the framing table I'll just use to kind of customize what my drawers look like. I think that looks pretty nice. This slot is the trim. This is the sides, and then this is the front. So we could only get 47 from that, but that's okay. I'll do the rest later. So I think I've got a pretty cool layout for, for this. I'm gonna look kind of like a library, I think. And yeah, obviously I need more, but that's okay. Just realized I did not make enough trim. I didn't make any trim at all. So 48 should be perfectly fine. And I'm just going to go underneath each of these little sections and connect them with this trim. So just to test some things, let's put some factory blocks there, some of our trim there, cobblestone, diorite, granite and some stone. If I attach my controller way down here, and I think you gotta shift right click first to activate it. Now look at that. If you um, crouch, the one probe shows you the content of the inventory. So obviously this drawer controller has access to all of these inventories. So that is awesome. So these drawers are only one of the two things I plan on setting up today to increase our storage capacity. I actually plan on getting some quantum storage units set up, which hold a massive amount of items. So for right now, we will postpone hooking these drawers up to our network through external storage, because I wanna get all of the bulk stored into quantum storage units before I hook these up. So now we will add quantum storage units to our list of auto crafting recipes. Let's grab some pearls. Let's throw some pearls in there. You can set this up so it's easy to automate. It has an output slot there, but look at that. This quantum storage unit will store billions of items. And we're going to hook these up through refined storage, external storage, as well as the drawer controller over there. So I'm going to make a bunch of these. I'm just going to ask this for 15 more of these because I really only want about 16. For right now. Okay, there's those. What I'm also going to do is start auto crafting Ender IO item conduits and auto craft external storage as well. My plan is exporting everything from our system into these quantum storage units so that we have none left over in our system because these storage units are going to be the first priority over refined storage. I'm going to need 16 external storage units. I'm going to craft another ender chest as well as another ender lock. And just set this right away. Save some inventory space. It took a little bit, but the external storage are all done. Then we're going to need one more exporter. Nice. Here's what we'll do. We're going to start auto crafting stack upgrades, which we already have all the necessary things. So just get that. 
and give me one stack upgrade. And there we go. And then get three speed upgrades. That should speed things up a little bit. Get some conduits going. So I know that I already have some cables right here. So I'm just gonna set these up in this wall. So here's the thing. A lot of you may have noticed that I use Optifine. Um, I was doing some pack testing and as you would expect, I don't use Optifine while testing because the pack doesn't include it. And I noticed I was around five to 10 S FPS in this general area. I removed the quantum storage units and the instant that I broke the last unit, my FPS climbed back up to the 90s, up to about 120. Um, I posted an issue about my problem and it seems a lot of people are having the same issue and absolutely no offense to the developer, but it seems he can't quite reproduce the problem we're having. So I think it's safe to say that this won't be fixed for a while. So luckily we have something to fall back on, which are these storage drawers that we set up. So remember, a while back when we were setting up our ore processing, I set up an interface and an inner chest going into that interface, which inserts items into the system. But I moved that back here for the time being, so I'm just going to borrow this interface and the ender chest as well. And this conduit has a bunch of ender IO item conduit speed upgrades in it as well. What I've done is I've made a little area here underground underneath this little storage block, and I made a tunnel for some cables. Drag them down here, all the way over here. And so first of all, I'm going to place down my drawer controller right there. Uh, make sure you shift right click on it so it kind of opens up and it starts recognizing all the drawers connected. I'm going to place my inner key chest right there and my interface right here. Make sure to put all the necessary upgrades inside of it. And then I'll put an inner IO conduit there. Set that to exports, disable that one, insert, and this is going to be the first priority. This will be the last priority that things will go to, because I want things to try and go into the storage drawers first, and then afterwards, if it has nowhere to go, go into our network. So I can just start connecting my cables up. Now, this is going to be kind of a long process in order to get everything out of my refined storage system and into the drawer network, but I'm gonna do one set of items and kind of do the rest off camera so you don't have to deal with that long process. So you see things are going into the interface first right now because there's no room in the drawers because I have all of them locked. And then we'll attach an exporter to this drawer controller and put all the necessary speed and stack upgrades inside of it. So we'll just put Ender Pearls in that drawer. Now if we go down here and whitelist pearls on this exporter, make sure this is set to compare damage. So just in case, and look at that. We've got 512 pearls in this drawer. So this is all that this drawer is gonna fit for now, 512. So we definitely need some upgrades. Actually, the way the Ender Pearl stacks are only 16, that's why it's only fitting 512 because storage drawers fit a certain stack of items and not an amount of items themselves. So one more time, we'll do something like clay. Then go down here and whitelist it. We see it's going up pretty quickly. 2,048 is how much it can store. And actually, from down here, we can see we just crouch and hover over the drawer controller with the one probe, you can see all the items in this network. So that's pretty cool. So there's actually a couple more things that I'd like to auto craft. So first off, we'll make the tier one storage upgrade for the drawers. And that just requires obsidian, which we have a ton of. And just for the heck of it, we'll make the tier two, which is the iron version as well. And for now, I'll craft 64. See how fast that goes. 
And then I also made some void upgrades. We'll take what we have for now. So these things, I am definitely going to be putting void upgrades on because they are renewable. Lastly, I'll put a void upgrade. And what will happen is if this ever gets too full, it will start just trashing the items that it gets from there on out. So knowing that the conduit downstairs is putting items into our drawer network first, we know that they will get trashed and they will not clog our refined storage network up. So for now, I'll just put a bunch of obsidian storage upgrades in there. And then I'll do the same for the clay one. So that's starting to go up. Increases the storage to two times the base value. So 64 stacks times two. And then it um, they don't multiply off of each other. I'm not going to try to do that math, but just know that it's going to store quite a bit. So basically, that's what I'm going to be doing for everything from here on out. And I will return once I've put everything in drawers. Oh, also check this out. Um, no more dragging items to your whitelist. You can actually shift click now. So that's very cool. That saves a ton of time for me. Um, and this is taken forever. So that's it's always good when you find little time savers like that. Okay, I'm just putting the finishing touches on things right now. I could finally get rid of this exporter for good. Maybe not for good. Maybe I want to add something onto the network later on. But for now, we can attach this. Let's set that to the highest priority. Compare damage, yes. That should be good. Now I have access to everything. In the first place, things will go when I put something back in the network. Like say I want to take stone out, put it back in, it will go into the drawers first. So let me show you everything. These are what my drawers look like currently. I've kind of put the things I think I'll be getting the least of in the small drawers and kind of put the rest of things in the big drawers and kind of put some upgrades in each one. So I've got a drawer for pretty much everything that I think I'll be using a bunch of. I've destroyed most of my quantum storage units here. Um, I can just destroy that one. I know I didn't show me setting these up, but you know, what would be the point? Um, <laughs> basically these were just external storage attached to these quantum storage units connecting all the items to the network. But we'll be getting rid of them all the same. We are getting a net gain of nether wart, so leaving that enderman farm going continuously all the time is fine because we're always getting nether wart, so that's awesome. And I also would like to show you how many dimlet parcels I have. I have 149 dimlet parcels. So that should be plenty to get us the right kind of base parts that we need to create our dimensional shard or dimension. I also want to show you this disk drive. It says we're only 7% full, so obviously we're doing something right here. So we've got these new chunk loaders from Persistent Bits. I see I actually got a model update. That's pretty cool. Think about these. You cannot set the chunk radius. There's also extra utils chunk loaders, um, which are cool. They have a cost though, but these have a default chunk loading range of seven. Obviously, we're going to be auto crafting these. So first we need to make a book and I'm interested in this recipe. So we need some blank patterns. We can do those. Enchantment table and then the chunk loader. So the only thing that we don't have that is renewable is string. And I have a solution for that. So we're going to do this real quick. Let's get my farmer. Let's get some flax seeds. Now, last video, I talked about the upgraded laser relays. So let's go ahead and make some of those. It's just the previous laser relay plus some Restonia and Inori crystal. So we'll make sure we never run out of energy in our farmers. So the normal laser relay transmits 1000 RF. This goes up to 10,000. Extreme goes up to 100,000, I believe, which is a ton. We don't need that much. We're good. And I've got my interlock here, which I will set to the black channel, which we know are our hose. We know this by now, so I'm just going to kind of cut to when I finish building this layer of the farm. So I realize I'm absolutely tired of having to run all the way over somewhere else to get water. So we're going to make some reservoirs. Also, you actually need four reservoirs to do this. So 
we've got four reservoirs here. I will just place these against this wall for now, because why not? Go ahead and put some water in them. Like that. If we take a bucket out, it regenerates its water back. So that is a pretty cool way to create an infinite water source, say if you're trying to pipe water out of somewhere. Been doing a little bit more chisels and bits so that I can get this water to stay on the floor above in a somewhat presentable manner. So now we have our crops that are going to be fertilized. Now, let's put my flax seeds in there, lock them, and we are good to go. We are officially getting string. Um, if you didn't know, flax yields string, which is really awesome. I set up the same type of setup that we did last time, except I added some advance energy laser relays. We'll transfer up to 10,000 RF per tick. There. Remember, there is an energy loss, though. So now I won't feel so guilty about crafting, say, like four chunk loaders. So F3 and G will show you your chunk boundaries. And we want this to be somewhere in the middle of our base. Somewhere like right here should be perfectly fine. But anyways, we have 47 dimensional shard ores. We need 100 of these, and I'm actually going to try to get a little bit more than that. So I'm going to go to my other dimension and get my quarry running. So while I'm off doing other things, I'm going to make a mechanical user. I'm going to get one importer as well as an exporter. And I'm also going to get my dimlet parcels. So this is the mechanical user. Let me just place a chest down here and check this out. The mechanical user um, has a lot of different options. There's a generic click, place block, use item on block, activate block, and you'll see it's <laughs> it just opened that chest there. And then we have use item. So watch this. If I put a parcel in there, it opens that parcel up. My reasoning for placing that chest down was just to show you that it can activate blocks. Once again, I'm going to tear this wall down. I'm going to put an exporter on the bottom there. Place my user down. I'll just place it upwards like this. And then I'll put my importer going into the back. Going to move this chest, actually. Disable this. There we go, I forgot my cables, but we're good now. So the importer is going to be on blacklist mode and I will blacklist dimlet parcels because we don't want those actually pulling out the parcels as soon as I import them. And then on export, of course, we're gonna be whitelisting dimlet parcels. Also those do compare damage just because. So listen to that. So obviously that's going to get a little bit annoying after a while, but you know what? It's something that we can leave going while we're gone, and any new incoming dimlet parcels will go straight into the user and will be converted into the base parts that we will need to use later on. So <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. I figure I need some sand, so I guess we'll go ahead and set up the quarry in this little desert here. Okay, looks like we are good to go. So let us set our timer down. So it looks like we are currently working on this chunk right here. Um, obviously, this is going to take a while. And I decided against voiding smooth stone because I like smooth stone. I think it'd be good to have. So once our storage drawer gets full of smooth stone, it'll actually start just voiding that. So that is fine now. All the ores are going through the ore processing part. So yeah. Just to show you what I'm up to during the long wait, 
I'm here at my pearl injector, or at least underneath my pearl injector. And I'm just adding an exporter here, exporting ender pearls. So we don't have to rely on this enderman spawner being on at all times just to get power. Now they will come directly from our storage system. So that is good. So here's what I'm going to do. If you haven't noticed yet, I'm a very indecisive person, and this builder is too slow. We're going to do something to speed this builder up and also demonstrate why I need dimensional shards. I am going to make my first RF Tools machine infuser. This machine allows you to infuse different blocks from RF Tools. This specific block, the builder, it says that the, its infusing bonus is reduced power consumption and increased building speed. So we definitely want that. Also, check this out. The infusing bonus of the energetic generators is increased power generation and reduced power loss for holding pearls. So that is going to be awesome. And we've got about 110 of them, which should be fine. Okay, there we go. It's receiving power. So this slot is where you put the block that you want to be infused. This slot is where you put your shards. You can see that it's consuming multiple dimensional shards, but it's only putting a small percentage of infusion on the block. And I'm going to leave like 16 left over just in case we need them for some reason. We got up to 36% infused, which is fine. We can set that back down. So now the power loss isn't so bad. So it looks like that's actually going a little bit quicker. Um, I'm not sure if that's just a placebo effect, but yeah, definitely looks like it. One other thing we may as well do while we wait is make a dimlet workbench, which allows you to deconstruct dimlets and also reconstruct dimlets out of the base parts. So this is going to require some RF. I'll just place it here. I have got two duplicates of this desert hill, so I'm going to deconstruct that one. And let's see what it does. Let's toss that in there and extract. It's going to take a little bit of time. And we get some control circuit and a dimlet biome type controller. If we search for a dimensional shard, we'll see that we need um, six things. And one of those things is a block which has absorbed the required amount of dimensional shard ore. And the other ones are several dimlet base parts. So let's get these things prepared. So there's those. That's simple enough. Now all we need is the material. So let's make a material absorber. Now I'm going to grab all the dimensional shard ore that I do have. Dimensional shard ore and place the material absorber on top of it. Look at that. It absorbed the dimensional shard ore. The one probe tells you the percentage that the material absorber has. And see, it's still at zero. It absorbed one and it's still at zero. 1%, 2%. So unfortunately, we're only currently at 40%. So obviously, this is going to take some time and some patience. So I'm going to sit here and wait for the dimensional shard ore to roll in. And I will return only when we have the required amount. So I will see you then. Oh boy, that was a long wait. So the quarry is, it's still going. It's going to do 14 chunks across. And then it's gonna go seven chunks this way. And then it's finally gonna finish. Um, I actually don't think I'm gonna leave it running. Let me show you what I've got. Um, these are all the resources that I've gathered while I've kept that running. There's 7,000 redstone, tons of stone, bunch of iron. I had to turn off my Enderman spawner because it was taking up so much power. Um, just a bunch of everything really, but the most important thing of all is this dimensional shard ore, and we can finally finish our material absorber.
And we're at 100%. Finally, should be able to just break this. And this is 100% full of dimensional shard ore. So now all that we got to do is go in here and put this in the material slot and check that out. We have a dimensional shard material dimlet, which it says is going to cost 10,000 RF per tick just to maintain this thing. So that's going to be kind of crazy. So I'm going to head on back to my dimension where I have my mining set up. I just had a little encasing here so that I didn't get attacked by mobs while I was waiting. And by the way, these ch these um, builders, all you got to do is chunk load the builder block and you can make the size as big as you want and it will only chunk load the chunk that it's currently mining in. Kind of like how the extra utils quarry used to work. So I will bring my quarry with me. I will need it. We're gonna we're gonna quarry our dimensional shards. So I actually have my advanced power cell on me. This is the one that we're gonna need to power our dimension. So just to prep, I'm gonna put this on top here, and that should be perfect. This will output 20,000 RF per tick, which should be fine. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this dimension out of here, and I'm just going to deconstruct this because it has some dimlets that I would like. So what we can do is we can replace this material stone dimlet with this dimensional shard ore dimlet. And it'll be kind of like this dimension, except with dimensional shards, obviously. It still has the effect none dimlet, which makes it so there's no negative effects or anything like that. Flat terrain, name that dimensional shard, and we'll store this. So this says it's going to cost 50,000 RF per tick to maintain. And I'm under the impression that each face of the builder or of the power cell outputs 20,000 RF per tick. Either way, I'm going to do something like this. And I removed my enchanter, and I have another conduit going into it from here. Um, obviously, I don't think we're producing 50,000 RF per tick, but hopefully we'll be able to keep up at least for a little while, just enough to get a decent amount of dimensional shards. So let's build this. Obviously, the power is going to drain quite a bit. It's only at 4%. Oh, man. Look at that. That is eating through our power. And Deep Resonance is going to turn back on to aid in this power shortage. Um, honestly, I don't know why I didn't hook this up to my main power network in the first place. So right now, this is only at 29%. And it's slowly, slowly but surely, it's it's going up. So I'm going to sit here and wait for this to reach 100%. And then we'll finally be able to visit our new dimension. So that should be a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, one more percent. Look at that. Dimension ready. Looks like it's struggling. It's, it's, uh, it's struggling a bit. So we'll see if we can go there and not die. Um, you can see right when the power starts to go up, it goes down immediately. So um, let's cross our fingers. Let's get our receiver ready just in case. Oh boy. Obviously, we're not generating enough power. Yeah, you saw I, I died the second I tried to join the world. So um, I let the power buffer build up a bit. We're going to start auto crafting some vibrant capacitor banks. We're going to build up a huge buffer and we're going to try to go there for for at least long enough to get some dimensional shards and then we'll come back immediately. We put one capacitor bank on top and one right here. That's these output 50,000. So actually, that's plenty. We can just output from the bottom here and we don't even need that conduit here, but that's fine. So I don't have my dimension in there. So this capacitor bank is just going to fill up with RF 50 million RF. The dimension requires 50,000 RF per tick to keep running. So in theory, if there's 20 or so ticks in a second, we should be able to stay there at least for a few seconds. And I know this looks a little funky right now. I'm, um, I've, I am I got to get my items back. I'm, I'm just a mess right now. So um, this should be full pretty soon. OK, so we're all full. Here's what I'm going to do. I will destroy this. Um, I'm going to put this pickaxe back. I don't want to lose this. I'll put that conduit there and I'll hook this advanced power cell back up. Well, not hook it, but just place it there. This should be already dialed in. 
the instant I put this in here, I am going to leave. All right, let's go. Okay, we got our items. Let's link our porter. We should have some dimensional shards. Look at that. Perfect. Got my builder here. Got my fortune quarry card. And we're going to go try and set up a quarry really quickly. Let's do that. Toss that in there and let's go. Okay. Be quick about this. That up. We just set the boundaries real quick. We'll just do whatever. Right click. Right click. Oh god, this is so nerve wracking. Uh, we'll just do 60, negative 30. Put that in there. Lever, go. Oh my. Let's go back. <laughs> oh my. Look at all those. Oh yes, yes. So we're going to do a little experiment here. Okay. So let's just do this. Let's just get our trusty hopper here. Let's place a hopper there. Put some shards in. And uh, put a generator in. So this is going to take a little bit to fully infuse, but eventually we'll get there. Nice. Check that out. We've got four 100% infused endergenic generators. So. Let's go back over here and let's set these up. So that's going to start going. Okay, so let's just break this real quick. Toss in our infuser, of course. Okay, there's that. That was pretty quick. And let's just see if this is able to keep up. Let's put that in there. Look at that. It looks like it's steady. It's kind of hovering around that million point. But look at that. It's going up to 2 million, 3 million, 4 million. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Many, many uses for shards. Um, you can increase coal generators RF per tick to like 240 RF per tick or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's going to be a huge help. But yeah, I'd say that that was a pretty successful video. So hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. And before I go, I just want to say that to all the people out there that are having their lunch or laying in bed watching my videos, even if you don't normally comment or like YouTube videos, let alone mine. I really do appreciate your viewership, and in return, I've been trying my best to respect your time. People who know me personally may think I'm just blowing smoke right now, but they truly don't understand what it's like to be a part of this community. So thank you guys for being so kind to me, and being so accepting to somebody who isn't already a YouTube veteran. Thank you so much for watching, and Hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.